Hey everyone, I'm back again to read in Jonah. So where was I? I was in verse 7. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused the terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us? They demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? So they asked this to Jonah. What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew, Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. Verse 10. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do that? Why did you do it? They groaned, why did you do it? And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked, they asked him, what should we do to stop this storm? So they asked Jonah, what should we do, Jonah, to stop this storm? And Jonah replied, throw, throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know this terrible storm is all my fault. Verse 13, instead the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to the land, but the stormy, the stormy sea was too violent, it was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God, O oh Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death, O oh Lord, you have sent this storm upon upon him for your own good reasons then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea and the storm stopped at once the sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights so you see the sailors chucked Jonah overboard and as soon as they chucked him the storm stopped and they were so amazed, so awestruck of God's power that they, that they suddenly began to serve, they serve him so they became converted Amen So chapter 2, Jonah's prayer then Jonah prayed to the, Lord, to the Lord, his God, from inside the fish. He said, I cried, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. I call to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence. Yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth, whose gates, whose gates lock shut forever. But you... O oh Lord my God, snatch me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord, and my earnest prayer went out to you, to you in your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their back on all God's mercies. But I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise, of praise, and I will fulfill all my vows for my salvation comes from the Lord alone, from the Lord alone. Then the Lord ordered the fish, the great fish, the big beast, the Lord ordered it to spit Jonah out onto the beach. Chapter 3 from the book of Jonah. Jonah goes to Nineveh. Nineveh? Nineveh. <laughs> then the Lord spoke to Jonah's then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. 
Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days! 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh, Nineveh believed God's message and from the greatest to the least, they declared, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show the sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this degree throughout the city. So they sent the message throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. So verse 10. When, when God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction, the destruction he had threatened. So you see, imagine David Cameron doing that. Everyone, stop the violence in London, in the UK. Pray to the Lord your God. Imagine David Cameron doing that, or Barack Obama doing that. Huh? Or every president, every prime minister from all the earths, all the countries of the earth, doing that. Chapter 4. Jonah's anger at the Lord's mercy. So Jonah got angry all of a sudden. He's angry. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah and he became very angry, so he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran to Tarshish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive. If what I predicted will not happen. The Lord replied. Is it right for you to be angry about this? Then, jo then Jonah went out to the east side of the city. And made a shelter to sit under. As he waited to see what would, what would happen to the city. And the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow there. And soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head. Shading him from the sun. This erased his discomfort and Jonah was very grateful for the plant. So you see, God looked after Jonah. For God also arranged for a worm. The next morning at dawn, the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered away. And as the sun grew hot, God arranged for a scorpion, for a scorching, not a scorpion, a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. So the wind blew on Jonah. In the future, I'm gonna I'm gonna add sound effects. The sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die. Death is certainly better than living like this, he exclaimed. Then God said to Jonah, "Is it is it right for you to be angry because the plant died?" Yes, said Jonah, retorted, even angry enough to die. <laughs> then the Lord said, you feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? So that, that is the end of Jonah. So if the Lord God said that to Jonah, You feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. 
It came quickly and it died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness. Like in England, UK, in other countries, many countries. They live in spiritual darkness. Not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? So you see, if God can save that city, Nineveh, from destruction, because all the people turn to God, and they praise Him, they worship, and they thank God, then of course you can do the same with the UK and many other countries where they're at war, they're fighting, where there's famine, poverty. Everyone can turn to the Lord. Everyone. Okay? We are all different. But if we can have the same heart for the same cause, which is God, the Almighty God, He can save a city like He saved this city, Nineveh, where it had 120,000 people who, had, who were spiritually darkness, who were living in spiritual darkness. God said, shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? Imagine if he's, he's, he's saying that right now about London, about Colombia, about every single city. So you have to just focus on the Lord, like the people did in this, in this city, Nineveh, where Jonah was. They all turned to God. And God saved that city, because they turned to Him. So we have to do that. Just wake up, London, Colombia, Brazil, USA, Mexico, Mexico, everywhere. Turn to God. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Why wouldn't you want to turn to God? Just turn to God. You're having troubles, you're having problems. You're unhappy with your life. You have addictions. Turn to God. Turn to God. Listen to Him with understanding. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to leave that message right there. I've read to you Jonah. I hope you liked my, my reading. And I... <laughs> I like the story. And so see you next time for another great reading of Mr. Ramirez reading the Bible for you people. See ya. Bye.